everybody. Welcome to the Hidden Gems Podcast. And this is the show where we like to give you some recommendations for a streaming service. And uh, it's so much fun. I'm film critic Rachel Wagner and Ryan is here. Hey, Rachel. It's great to be with you once again. Uh, we're recording this on Super Bowl Sunday. I'm going to be filling my football quota for the year. <laughs> my <laughs> Watching my one game and probably <laughs> just for the trailers because we're getting... Yeah. We're getting a Lord of the Rings trailer. I think we're getting a Moon Knight trailer, even though that came out already. I hear we're getting, I think we're getting a She-Hulk one. Uh, I'm going to be poking my head into the Suit Up Geeks' live stream and reacting along with them. I won't be on it, but I'll just be in the, uh, in the comments uh, paying attention to it. You know what would be really exciting? If we got a teaser for Avatar 2. Wow. because yeah, we've, we've heard so much about it. And, but it's still probably too far out. But that would be cool. Well, knowing uh, this, that that movie has been, <laughs> I someone should make a movie about making that movie. If you really think about it, because Avatar two or Avatar came out in two thousand nine. My local theater opened in December of two thousand and nine. The first movie that I saw in that theater was Avatar. So seeing Avatar two is going to be an experience because it'll be. The first movie I saw there and seeing it at my local theater will bring everything full circle. I know. I mean, I just want to see the darn thing. So much, I heard so much about it. It's not that I'm like the hugest fan of the original, but then you talk about a lead up. <laughs> I'm, I'm Plus, going... the, the first Avatar I, I, I saw with my brother and we got evacuated out in the middle of the movie. <laughs> Really? What happened? Yeah, there was some kind of fire or something, and uh, so. <laughs> Thankfully, that's so. never happened to me. Thank, yeah. thank God for that. But um, <laughs> but I'm I'm going into the I'm going to Avatar two just primarily as a fan of James Cameron. I'm a big fan of him as a filmmaker. I mean, Terminator T yeah. two, Titanic. I love Titanic. I'm unabashed mm -hmm. in saying that that people are like oh you know james cameron like he all like he doesn't make any movies anymore yeah he does he just takes his sweet time doing it and when he does release them they're the biggest movies of all time like yeah. he's had not one but two of the highest grossing movies of all time that ain't nothing <laughs> yeah you spent the last 20 years in pandora i mean come on pretty Let's much see it. Yeah. <laughs> the disney rides have come out in the time between yeah. avatar and avatar 2 whole land uh yeah that would be really fun if there was if there was a teaser but i'm not i doubt there will be it's just that would be fun but uh but we decided today to talk about peacock this will be our ninth episode on peacock which is kind of amazing and I, there are two reasons one because of marry me which premiered on peacock and in theaters but also because that's the big hub of the Olympics, which is happening this week. So it's kind of, I mean, when, when they were originally designing the service, like sports was a big part of it uh, that, they, that they were uh, kind of featuring and they wanted to have it, uh, have it released at the same time as the Summer Olympics, but then that ended up getting a delayed a year from when they were releasing. So then they just released it uh, and, um, yeah, so uh, it's kind of a, an interesting, uh, been an interesting trajectory for Peacock, and uh, they have had pretty good coverage, I think, of the Olympics. I haven't been able to watch as much as I would like because I've just been too busy, but uh, but I've watched some, and uh, they have some pretty good teams uh, of coverage, providing coverage. I particularly like the curling team; they're a lot of fun. The the, the commentators on the curling are really good. Um, but, uh, the commentator on the hockey is not very good. They need to work on that. The woman's hockey, not great, but for the most part, they're doing a good job and I've really been enjoying the Olympics. It's been a bit of a different one for the U S because we haven't won and been as dominant as we typically are. Like, I don't think we won a single skiing medal, uh, which, you know, my friend Michelle from, from, uh, uh Scotland, she was just like, wow, wow. We haven't won a single thing for Great Britain. Not one. <laughs> well, as soon as they lost like Lindsey Vaughn, that was definitely <laughs> like a, like a, that was definitely like one of their big mm -hmm. game pieces taken off the board. 
Well, yeah, and Mik- Michaela Schifrin has had a tough Olympics. I mean, it's been kind of it's been inspiring to to watch her, you know, and but uh, but it hasn't been what she expected, that's for sure. But um, but yeah, it's still been a lot of fun stuff. Uh, Nathan Chen uh, in the um, figure skating that was fun, and uh, I'm sure there'll be more by the time this airs. It'll be almost over the Olympics, so yeah. should be some other fun stuff. Yeah, and while we're on the topic of sports, I want to give Peacock credit. For the Rolex 24, it was all shown on NBC and then USA, basically NBC Universal oh, yeah. their networks. And give credit to Peacock. They showed the entire race. Like The first couple hours were shown on NBC. Then it went to USA till about, I think, 10 p.m. And then from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m., it was all on Peacock. And... Mm. All I have to say is that I hope they gave those cameramen like breaks or like broke it off into like shifts because yeah. I was a cameraman for my TV class and standing there with this big old camera like doing that and like that, that would get really tiresome after a while. So I, all I'm saying is I hope they gave them breaks or something. I hope so too. I hope so too. <laughs> but give the service credit. They did cover the, the whole race flag to flag. So because... I remember back in the old days when I would used to watch, like after the TV coverage ended, it was like you were in the dark for the remainder of the race for like, for like the hours of like 11 PM to 6 AM. You were like, I hope Wayne Taylor racing is in the lead when I wake up. And it turns out, Oh, it was Michael Shank. They took over at like 2 AM while you were dead asleep. And you're like, wish I could have seen it. But you know, Did you just go to like one portion of it. I went to see the start and then I left mm. at about the hour, hour and a half mark because mm. with the 24, they start together, but then some, the, it's broken up into certain classes of race cars. Like for example, there's the Daytona prototypes and they're the faster ones. So they'll just break off and then they'll pass the GTs and everyone else. So it, it's not like the Daytona 500 when they're in close proximity to each other. It's all like, they start together and then it's like, you're all on your own. And so it's, it's fun to be there for the start of it because I, I, I love watching the designs of the cars too. They get, they get more creative every year, but at the same time, you're like, all right, it's been an hour. I can watch the rest from home now, it's especially in the later hours when like no one's really there. Interesting. Cool. Well, we wanted to talk about Marry Me. So this uh, debuted in theaters and on Peacock. And of course it stars Jennifer Lopez uh, as this basically herself. (laughs) Um, And she's going to get married and uh, in this big stadium singing this song to her fiance. And he ends up having cheated on her with her assistant. And she sees Owen Wilson's character with a marry me sign and she says, okay, I will marry. She marries Owen Wilson. And, uh, and then it's kind of a marriage of convenience slash uh, sort of, it's almost like a royal movie in a way. You know, one of these romances where the commoner falls for the, for the in this case, a celebrity, but similar to like a, you know, a, a princess. And yeah, it's an interesting uh, film uh, for the, uh, the, the rom-coms. And we're finally getting some in theaters. It's so exciting. Uh, but uh, what did you think overall of the movie? I really enjoyed this. And I did not think that I would. I mean, mm-hmm. I thought I would like it, but I would be just like, uh, can we just get back to them kissing again? But no, <laughs> I, I liked the movie on the whole. I liked J-Lo and Owen. I thought they had good chemistry with each other i especially sympathize with owen because because i I would definitely be the owen wilson in this scenario i would definitely be the uncool one who still has Mm. a flip phone because what year is it again like when i saw that flip phone i'm i was just in there like did you rob the museum like what happened right (laughs) yeah i mean i overall in enjoyed the film. I, I thought it was sweet. I think that you couldn't have anybody else play this role, but Jennifer Lopez, not even just the fact that she's a huge star, but just the fact that she's been married so many times and you are been in long-term relationships with so many different people. And 
I could picture her doing this. It seems authentic to who she is, like as crazy as it seems. Like she's she's married like her backup dancers in the past. I mean, she's she's had some some more outlandish marriages and relationships. Uh, and in the, even her relationship with um, with uh, Bastian, uh, played by Maluma, that I mean felt pretty authentic to some. You know, she's been with uh, you know, famous singers in the past and things like that. Uh, I I actually felt like their chemistry wasn't the best. Uh, it didn't quite work for me. Uh, I felt like Owen Wilson was a little phoning it in in his performance I just i wanted a little bit more from him but i still overall enjoyed it i uh, i also i felt like they could have done a better job with some of the supporting roles like i didn't really get sarah silverman's whole performance and role in the movie i think she was supposed to be comic relief but nothing was really that funny yeah. I don't know. Her 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 role didn't really work that well for me. Yeah, I wasn't a big fan of her either. I I have mm-hmm. a feeling that her role was to be like the sidekick that you see in many of these rom-coms who were like doing the jokes and hitting on all of the in Sarah Silverman's case, women in in this case. Yeah. But but I don't know, it just didn't work for me. And then yeah. there there was uh Cat's assistant who her scenes are limited, but I just did not like her. Like there were there's yeah. a scene where she straight up like like there's a scene where Kat and and J Lo and Owen are talking about um are are, are talking and uh, and Owen is like I've got a thing for for Tank like uh, for Tank like his doc and, and the assistant goes oh is that the name of your daughter I'm like what like how was yeah, she was able to get away jokes. with that yeah. That's so well, gross. Yeah, and it felt like the the daughter. I thought the daughter was really cute. The actress, she's she's a very talented young lady, but they kind of would forget about her for a long time, and then all of a sudden, oh wait, what about my daughter? You know, kind of thing. It's like, well, you probably, if you were so concerned about your daughter, you probably shouldn't have married this, you know, woman in the like with, I don't know, in the middle. But it seems a little a little crazy. But um, but I, I did like the music. There's a lot of music. Uh, if you're not into Jennifer Lopez's style, then that might be a problem. But I thought they were pretty good songs, and and uh, I enjoyed them. And I I thought that actually her and Bastian, her and Maluma, um, had probably better chemistry than her and Olsen, even though he's supposed to be kind of the you know the bad guy. He, he's the cheat they had really good chemistry. Yeah, my one my one issue with the Bastion character is that how did he think he was going to be able to get away with this affair with people surrounding them all day, especially yeah. with this on them at all times? Right. How did they possibly think, oh, yeah, I can get away with having an affair with yeah. my very public fiance that they're go that we're playing this whole big thing around well the whole the whole way the movie did social media didn't really make a whole lot of sense like for instance you're supposed to buy that somebody on jennifer lopez's level is still out there like managing her own social media and like <laughs> doing uh doing spots for uh sponsorships for vitamix and stuff like that like she would maybe have her own blender, her her own you know line of fitness equipment or something like that. But there's no way that Jennifer Lopez is out there with her own like, managing her own social media like that and still like promoting products like that uh, the way that they showed in the movie. And I think they were trying to just make like this big contrast between Owen Wilson, who's like the the uh, um, what's the word um. I can't think of it, but the the person who's like against technology you know the um who's oh. the person who's bad at technology is a word for it i can't think of it but um you know and then her, and, and then her who's like kind of a slightly obsessed with it and she's new for a career and everything but i just feel like there's there would be somewhere like i could picture someone on more of a b-level celebrity 
like doing that. Somebody that would be on QVC, like promoting products, things like that, but not someone like Jennifer Lopez. Yeah, that definitely felt a little, uh, felt a little suspect. That, I got, <laughs> that was just me anyway. Yeah, but it was still a cute romantic comedy and the music was good and it, you know, it had a sweet message in the end. And uh, so, you know, I, I definitely still recommended it. I, I uh, was just excited to have a film on this scale in the theaters for romantic comedies because we haven't had one for a long time. Yeah, it's, um, I'm, if my performance on the Suit Up Geeks rom-com trivia challenge <laughs> was proof, I'm not really a rom-com person, but I am going to try, I am going to try and fix that though. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to have, I'm going to watch When Harry Met Sally for the first time and have a review up for that. Yay. I don't think it's going to hit my goal of getting on Valentine's Day, which is tomorrow, but I'll, I'll get it around there at some point anyway. You can watch Clueless too. I will Put definitely on... get around to that as well. Yeah, you got to watch it. You got to watch it. Well, very good. I, yeah, I gave it a three out of five stars on my letterbox. What would you give Marry Me? I would, um, I would definitely agree with you on that one. All right. Well, let's give our recommendations. I'll start. My first um, movie recommendation for Hidden Gems on Peacock is Harriet. And this movie uh, tells the story of Harriet Tubman, and it uh, got a Best Acting nomination from for Cynthia Erivo. And they do some really interesting stuff with this movie. Uh, they uh, kind of there's a little bit of a I don't know magical realism almost a little bit with it, uh, with her um, the way that she uh, finds people and the way that, like her connection to God and uh, the, the, just the spirit that she feels. And I thought that was really interesting. Um, you know, this has a great cast, Leslie Odom Jr., Janelle Monet, uh, of course, Cynthia Erivo, Jennifer Nettles. Uh, so it's a great cast. Uh, it, it has those themes of faith. Um, so, the, you know, it's, it's pretty inspirational. It's got some music um, and, uh, you know, tells the story of Harriet Tubman. I, I think it's just insane that this is the first version this is the first biopic we've ever had of harriet tubman like how did it take that long that yeah. amazed me but i think it's I've worth actually, watching i've actually read a couple books on harriet tubman and mm -hmm. one of the most remarkable things was when she would rescue a slave and try and take him to freedom whenever they would get like cold feet and be like i'm scared like she had, would have a gun and she pointed at him as like you're either going to be free or die i'm like yeah and that's in the movie Wow, Harriet. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's funny. Like, mm -hmm. like, yeah, they definitely almost make it feel like a Western. Like she's sort of an outlaw is the yeah, way they, that, is the that tone and feel. That was definitely the vibe that I was getting from it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's def I think it's worth a watch. It's not perfect, uh, but uh, I'm sure that some people wanted it to be a little more gritty. I think that this is more your sort of introductory movie that you could show to elementary kids and things like that. That's not going to be too traumatic, but starts to start some just good discussions. Yeah. And so. what's interesting about biopics like this is that this is a good gateway drug, like, like you alluded to a yeah. good gateway drug to the subject. I remember yeah. I saw walk the line for the first time and I loved it and it wanted me to learn more about Johnny Cash and yeah. his style of music. So if done correctly, it'll want the viewer to learn more about more about yeah. that person because something like 12 years a slave is too it's too much for little children but this you could watch with them and have a you know a good discussion could be argued that 12 years a slave is too much for some adults <laughs> <laughs> that's true <laughs> yeah that's true so what's your first pick so my first choice is from 2008 and I've recommended the original before, and now I'm going to recommend the remake, uh, Journey to the Center of the Earth. Uh, this starred Brendan Fraser, Josh Hutcherson, and is based on the book by H.G. Wells. If you have read that or seen the original, it doesn't really much deviate from that formula. A professor believes that he knows the route to the center of the earth. And so in, in the case of this movie, he takes his nephew and an Icelandic mountain guide along with them. 
I will say this is not a perfect movie. I think I must have seen this at the right time. This I remember my dad and I watched this and The Incredible Hulk from 2008 as like a double feature. It was I rented them both from Blockbuster. Remember that, and so that was that was a lot of fun. But I think maybe I have rose tinted glasses for this movie. But I've always really liked it. It did exactly what it needed to do. It's Brendan Fraser in an action movie and or an adventure movie in this case. And I just love seeing him in these. I'm really happy that Brandon Fraser is making a bit of a minor comeback because it was like he disappeared for quite a long time. And seeing him in like Doom Patrol and No Sudden Move, which is an excellent HBO movie, like seeing him is just, I don't know, it's nice to see him back. He's a lot of fun in this movie. I like Josh Hutcherson. He's been getting quite a few roles like he was in Hunger Games after this and he's gone on to do a, quite a bit of work there. My one complaint about the movie is that this was coming around during the big 3D movement where every movie felt like it was in 3D and that was going to be the new thing and it wasn't but there's definitely some 3D type gimmicks where for example Josh Hutcherson has a yo-yo and I'm pretty sure just by me saying he has a yo-yo, you know exactly what it entails. There's <laughs> things where it's like, woo, yeah. and woo, and you, like throwing it and coming it back. It, it's very distracting and definitely dates the movie considerably. However, I still think the movie is a lot of fun. Yeah, I've never seen this one. I guess I've never seen, I don't know if I've ever seen a, a uh, journey to the center of the earth movie at uh, any version it's a so, really it's a really fun story and if you yeah. if the story plays its cards right you can do a lot of you can have a lot of creativity with what really is happening at the center of the earth i i almost yeah. kind of wish that in the modern like in the monster verse they would do something like that like maybe do as like a prequel and like journey to the center of the earth and they find godzilla and mothra and all of them they'd be like what <laughs> it probably <laughs> never happened but it would be and they did some of that in um in congress godzilla there's that whole thing of drilling to the center of the earth and the that yeah true. yeah <laughs> flawed <laughs> uh, but very good all right well my next choice is actually going to christmas <laughs> i mean i don't know if it's become anything where i end up recommending a christmas movie every single uh week but Nevertheless, this is a movie called This Christmas, and <laughs> it's a really fun movie. I, I think anybody from a big family can relate to these movies with like these huge families all gathering and, uh, and the, all the antics that happen, and this is a very good version of that. You have an incredible cast with Loretta Devine, Delray Lindo, Idris Elba, Regina King. You have Idris... Uh, yeah, sorry. You, you have Laura Devine, Delroy Lindo, Idris Elba, Regina King, uh, Chris Brown. Uh, the list goes on and on. And uh, they are haven't been together for a long time. And their father has passed away. Uh, and so that's kind of part of the reason why they haven't really been together because that pain. Uh, and their mother is dating somebody new, which is kind of a, a source of conflict. And then you have the youngest son, who's they name they call Baby, uh, and he is Chris Brown, and he wants to become a singer, but they don't want him, him to do that because the father character was was a musician and uh, wasn't uh, there for the family. You have Idris Elba, who is a saxophone player, but he's also kind of up to no good. And he is with Regina King, and she's great, of course. Anyway, it's just really funny and charming and family. Uh, and uh, so if you like family comedies, Christmas movies, you'll enjoy it. You know, I, I was looking at the cast list just now and Idris Elba's in there. And yep. it is so strange because Idris Elba is like a big deal now. But seeing like some of the stuff he was in like before he was big, like, it just, it, it seems strange to me. Yeah, and he plays the saxophone in it. Wow. So. <laughs> Didn't think I could like that man anymore, but here well, we Well, yeah, are. I mean, and it has Regina King, who's now Oscar winner. So. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's a good one. It's a good movie if you want a family comedy for Christmas. 
Uh, so what's your next pick? So my next choice is from 1989. And since we're talking about a family, I'm going to recommend a family movie. It's called Uncle Buck. I had to take a look to see if I thought that I had recommended this before, but I did not see it on our letterbox list. So I'm going to recommend it now because Uncle Buck is fantastic. Uh, I love John Candy in Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, but this is the best John Candy performance by a significant margin. It tells the story. It tells the story of a man named Buck, played by John Candy, who is asked to babysit his uh, his nieces, his nieces and nephew after his brother, uh, his brother's wife's father. I think I got that right. Has a heart attack, and. Buck is very much the black sheep of the family. He is still single, even though he's 40 years old. He drives a beat-up car. He gambles. He still smokes cigars. He has an on-again, off-again relationship with his kind of, sort of, girlfriend, played by Amy Madigan. So, but he has a heart as big as all outdoors. And that really sums up John Candy in a nutshell. A heart as big as all outdoors. This is definitely a late 80s John Hughes movie, so it's definitely on some people's radar. However, I can't recommend this movie enough because, like I said, it's John Candy's best performance. He can be sensitive here, but he can also be funny and even darkly funny at some points. There's a whole subplot between he and the youngest, or not the youngest, the oldest daughter named Tia, and, and her relationship with her, I want to say, boyfriend named Bug. Yeah, that is his name. And there is a funny joke where, where Buck is like, Bug, what's his last name? Spray? <laughs> and, and that was really funny. <laughs> and there is a scene where, where Buck is like, hey, Bug, listen, I want, to, I want to bury the hatchet with you. You know what a hatchet is, right? And Bug's like, an axe? And, and, Buck, and Buck is like, no, no, no. It's just like a tiny little thing. Like, here, I'll show you. And and Bug just gets completely spooked, and he's like, Tia, you better split. I don't want this guy pulling an axe on me. And Tia's like, he's just top. And sure enough, a second later, Buck's like, here it is. And he's got this, he's got a hatchet. And it's like, here, let me show it to you, Bug. Maybe later. Okay. And it's like, it's, yeah. Um, Macaulay Culkin <laughs> is in this movie, too, and he's good for his limited amount of lines. I love this movie. I've watched it way too many times. And of most of the movies John Hughes has been involved with, this is probably the one I've seen the most, which is which is odd considering he also had a hand in Home Alone. Right. Yeah, I haven't seen this for a long time, but I do remember enjoying it. I definitely saw it. And yeah, John Candy is so great in it. And he takes a character that should be super grating and makes him endearing. Yeah, especially when he's like chewing someone out. Like there's a scene with a clown who shows up completely plastered and drunk. And, and he, he looks at the clown. And he's like, have you been drinking this morning? And the clown's like, blah, 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 blah. And, and then Buck is like, oh, well, I would just, I wouldn't really be drinking if I knew I was going to be performing for some kids. And the clown gets offended. He's like, I'm a pillar of entertainment. I'm a god. And John Candy's like, get in your mouse, get <laughs> out of here. And then Clown's like, well, why you lie like Saka? And just as he's about to swear, Candy reaches back and punches the Clown in the face. Like, I'm not doing it justice. It yeah. is, it's so good. Yeah, that's a good one. Well, I have a comedy to recommend as well, another romantic comedy. And it's a fun one because it's, it's a little bit subversive. It's called The Breakup. And this stars uh, Vince Vaughn and Jennifer Aniston. And uh, it's basically about this couple that they decide to break up. But the problem is, is they have this incredible apartment that neither of them wants to give up. And so they decide to, that they're going to somehow share this apartment, despite the fact that they have broken up. And they both kind of try to be so difficult that the other person will want to give up the apartment and uh i don't know i just i think it's funny i think it's a little bit different and than your typical romantic comedy uh and uh so yeah i i i like it what have you seen this one 
No, I've only seen the trailer, and I know that this was directed by Peyton Reed, who would later direct, who would later direct Ant Man, and I believe Ant Man and the Wasp as well. So he would go on to do bigger things. And it's also ironic because the movie The Breakup also stars John Favreau, who would kick the MCU off with the first Iron Man. That's true. Yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah, and it's. It's got Justin Long, John Michael Higgins, Judy Davis, Vincent D'Onofrio, Jason Bateman, and Margaret. It's I me. Mean, so it's got a pretty stacked cast, and I mean, I just appreciate it. in the world of rom coms, it's something a little bit different. You know that it's a, about a breakup and not about a, um, a, you know, your typical story. So, what is your next pick? So my next choice, and look at my list. So my next choice is from 2011, and it is called This Means War. And this movie got, gets a lot of crap, and I kind of understand why, but I kind of think the movie's fun. It, uh, it stars Chris Pine and Tom Hardy, and they both work for the CIA and they're best friends. However, unknowingly, they are dating the same girl, played by Reese Witherspoon. And they learn about it, and they're... And, and they are like, all right, well, let's see who she chooses. May the best man win. And they proceed to start messing with each other. Like, for example, when Tom Hardy learns that Chris Pine is going to take her to see some rare art, like, like, Chris, like he messes with Chris Pine's earpiece and feeds him like, like offbeat information about how this painter was painted stuff with his with sticks and everything and Chris Pine sounds foolish and then it, it eventually ends with instead of sticks he uses his and he uses replace the st with d I'm sure you can imagine that and then right. and it's just these two trying to level up on each other just like one after the other after the other but weirdly I I like Maybe it's because I like Tom Hardy so much, but I I thought this movie was fun. It definitely has its kind of cringy moments, and I get why someone wouldn't like it. However, I don't know. I guess I just, I don't know. I just liked it. I haven't seen it. I have not seen this movie. So, yeah, maybe one of these days I'll have to give it a shot. <laughs> uh, well, my uh, next pick is another romantic comedy. And I don't know, you could debate if this, I mean, this was a big hit when it came out, but nevertheless, I picked it anyway. Uh, we're talking about Miss Congeniality, and this is a ridiculous movie. It's silly, but I still think it's funny, and I enjoyed it, and it's Sandra Bullock at her rom com maybe, except for while you were sleeping. <laughs> and I think she has pretty good chemistry with Benjamin Bratt and uh michael kane's fun as her pageant coach and uh it's got some funny funny dialogue I and mean, chris we all know that the 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 whole perfect day speech is, is really funny um and uh some other you know good scenes and uh, it's just sweet funny romantic comedy i've never seen this the only thing i know about it is that Raj from the Big Bang Theory made a reference of how uh, like something was as good as the first Miss Congeniality and then saying the sequel was not good. So yeah, I haven't That's really... accurate. <laughs> <laughs> that's accurate. Yeah. <laughs> but uh but yeah, it's not going to like change your life or anything this movie, but it's a funny, it'll make you laugh, a uh, sweet little movie. So what is your next pick? So my next choice is from the year 1999. And this was the, uh, and I want to prep everyone. I'm recommending a Woody Allen movie. I'm recommending ants. Now mm -hmm. I, I get the whole Woody Allen thing and I'm not going to go too deep into it here. I have acknowledged it. And now I'm going to talk about ants. I well, think I mean, in fairness, he is just the voice actor. He's not the director. Oh, that's a good point. Yes. But I just, yeah. People on the internet, you know, they like to <laughs> jump to conclusions. So I'm no, I know, I know. <laughs> getting out ahead of all of that because I really do enjoy this movie. This this was actually the movie that pretty much started DreamWorks. Uh, Jeffrey Katzenberg was working at Disney, and and Rachel, I'm sure you all you know 
all about this. Katzenberg says, all right, I'm leaving, and I'm taking the bug movie with me. And Pixar was like, not our bug movie. And so that's the reason why we got two movies about bugs in actually 1998. I got my years wrong. Uh, A Bug's Life and Ants, both in the same year. And now that I've seen both, I like both, but I actually think A Bug's Life is just a little better. I think Ants definitely works in the context of like, I remember watching it as part of my English class and we had read something about, I can't remember the novel right now, but it was about a dystopian society, about how everything was in perfect order and ants was kind of about the same way and it was about one ant breaking away and trying to start out on a different path and the cast in the movie really is the reason to watch this you got woody allen you got sylvester stallone weirdly in this but he's good here and i don't know i like i like the animation i like the cast the dialogue is really good I'll, I'll definitely recommend a bug's life above ants however ants i think is really soft really solid outing for DreamWorks to start off. Yeah, when I first watched this, I didn't care for it. It's kind of messy. It's all over the place in the story and and the characters and everything. But when I went back a few years ago and watched it for a DreamWorks series I was doing, I I kind of enjoyed it. It's a really odd movie. It's like got this weird anti-military sort of message and like this anti-fascist message and I don't know, mixed in with kind of your classic hero's journey story. Uh, And then there's other weird stuff in there. Uh, The the animation is pretty brown, brown, brown on brown on brown. But (laughs) uh, it's it's just, it's it's an interesting movie. It's an experimental movie where they really tried some stuff. So I appreciated it more on my watch, uh, my last watch. Yeah, I'll... um... Uh, the best uh, the best movie with a deeper message about people shooting bugs is definitely Starship Troopers. That's the <laughs> best one. Yeah, I haven't seen that. I oh, believe you, should. though. It's directed by the guy who did RoboCop and basically. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Well, my last pick is also from DreamWorks. And it's definitely a little bit of a stretch as a hidden gem. I get it. I acknowledge that. But I still don't think it gets the credit that it deserves and the praise it deserves is the Prince of Egypt. And I absolutely love the Prince of Egypt. I love the storytelling. I, the, how they brought in basically this idea of sort of two brothers uh, into the, into the story, Ramsey and Moses. Uh, I think it's so beautifully done. I love the, the voice work. Some of them is, a, it's, a, it's a little celebrity heavy uh, and that can be a little distracting, but I still really enjoy it. And the animation's incredible. The music is so beautiful. And uh, it's just one of my favorite movies. One of my favorite videos I've ever done was my review of this movie with you and Durbin. That was one of my, that was one of my favorites. I'll never forget. I made him laugh to a well-timed <laughs> film reference. I, I yeah. want to get him, I want to get him back on the channel one day, hopefully. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, yeah, that was really fun. In fact, when I did my top 100 movies of all time, Prince of Egypt made my top, made it into my top 50, and it might even be higher now than it was then. So it's one of my favorites. Yeah, this is this is a faith based film that doesn't really like lay it on thick. Like it's definitely a Bible story, but you don't have to be religious in order to enjoy it. That's yeah. what makes it an all time. And it has such a reverence to it. I love the burning bu- burning bush sequence. Uh, if it's a, it, it captures what I would imagine being in God's presence would be like. It's quiet. It's peaceful. You know, it's not this sort of bombastic uh, take that you typically see with the big fire and uh, you know, kind of a thing. No, this is quiet, peaceful, loving, and uh, I, I love it for that. So that is my last pick. What's your last pick? So my last choice is a TV show, and it is a show called Alfred Hitchcock Presents. If you just know Alfred Hitchcock from the movies that he's done, which, I mean, that's a nice thing to know him for, but he also did a television show called Alfred Hitchcock Presents. It was kind of similar to The Twilight Zone, but instead of Rod Serling, it's Alfred Hitchcock, and he would always 
he would always introduce every episode with the classic with his silhouette and he would always introduce every episode of like and welcome to alfred hitchcock presents they're my non-existent british accent but there it is and i remember watching a lot of this in high school because in in our film appreciation class we watched this episode called the cheney vase which is still one of my favorite episodes of the show and i was just sitting there like wow hitchcock even in short form tells great stories and so there's definitely some dated stuff in there not for like problematic stuff but definitely dated stuff in terms of other matters but it's Alfred Hitchcock. If you're a fan of his movies like Psycho or Rear Window or North by Northwest, then you're going to love Alfred Hitchcock Presents. Yeah, I've never seen any of these, so I'm definitely very curious. Definitely uh, it's good start, to know that they're on Peacock. Definitely start with the Cheney Vase. I can't remember okay. which season it's in, but that's that was my gateway drug into it, so I, I recommend that's where everyone starts. Cool. Yeah, that sounds great. Uh, I'll definitely have to take a look at that. So there we go. We did it. Another week talking about Peacock. <laughs> Very fun. Let us know what you think of our picks and what you have been watching on Peacock and what you think of Marry Me and the Olympics. Anything. Let us know in the comment section or on Twitter. And Ryan, how can people find you? Uh, they can find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Letterboxd at RyanCam20. Then there's, of course, my YouTube channel, which is just called RyanCam. Um, on the channel this week, I got a new Twilight Zone video out for the probably one of the most famous Twilight Zone episodes ever, Eye of the Beholder. And just by me saying that title, you probably know exactly what it's all about. And I'm going to be talking about that. And then my review for Scott Pilgrim vs. the World with Loretto from the Suit Up Geeks is up on the channel, so I recommend you all check that out. I'll also <clears throat> have another episode of Life in the Movies with Ryan and Jacob. We're going to be discussing the Book of Boba Fett and the new Jurassic World trailer, how I'm not excited for that movie in the slightest, because after Fallen Kingdom, that, that series has left me cold, but I'll be talking more about that on the podcast. And then... I'll be covering Uncharted and Dog, and then I'll be posting my first reaction to the social network. So a lot of stuff coming to the channel. So if you haven't checked me out, please do. Yeah, you all should definitely check it out. And you can find me at Rachel's Reviews, all of our social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Rotten Tomatoes. So check that out. And also make sure you're following uh, the Hallmarkies podcast. I think you'll really enjoy that. And uh, if you are listening on iTunes, please leave your ratings and reviews. We appreciate that so much. And if you are watching on YouTube, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. We also have the merch store and patron group. Please take a look at that. And uh, thanks so much, everybody. We'll talk to you all next week. Bye, everyone. Bye.